Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a small workshop vlog just showing you some of the things I've bought in the past few weeks and also the wood turning weekender which I went to yesterday. And I'm also working on a project which I'll show you now. So I'm currently working on a bowl that was inspired by something I saw at the wood turning weekender and this video will be out in about two weeks time. So as I just said, I went to the wood turning weekender yesterday and it was absolutely fantastic. Chestnut Products did a fantastic job of organising it all and you got given a goodie bag which came with a variety of different things and I also bought rather a few different things as well. So I'll show you some of those now. So apologies for some of the background noise you can hear, there's people working across the road, building things. I can't do much about that. This is the only chance I've got to film this workshop vlog so we'll just have to make do with the background noise. So firstly it came with a pad, I'm sorry about the lighting here, um, it came with a pad, a pen, a tack cloth, um, a, what else did it come with, a safety cloth, a sticker, a smock badge and a pin badge and then it also came with some Nywix pads, I've actually been wanting to try some of these so I'm pretty happy that I've got some of these, there's four different colours there, obviously four different grades, and then some medium super glue. Super glue is something you can never have enough of, so I'm really happy that I've got some of that. Now, moving on to the things I bought, I think I'll start with these ones. So, firstly, I bought a big one litre tub of Ensil, and that's because I'm going to be working a lot with green wood this year. I've got many, many green wood projects planned, and I've got some logs drying underneath some of these workbenches. And I want to seal the ends. Now you can do it with PVA, but a proper end seal does work really well. And it was only £10, so I thought I would give it a try and see how it works. Then I've got something that I've been meaning to get for absolutely ages, pretty much since I started turning, which is some spray cellulose sanding sealer. It would be really useful to have some, especially when I did the longboard project. It would have made a big help there, but I didn't have it at the time. But now I've got it, it should make a big difference on turning projects. And then I bought two other things. This thing, which I'm really excited about, which is essentially like an air sprayer. Um, what do you call them? An air sprayer. I um, can't think what you call them. Basically like a spray gun. That's it, spray gun. Um, it will come to me what the actual name of it is. But this is essentially a spray gun that you can dip into spirit stains or into any sort of paints. And you can blow through them. So it's almost like an air gun for painting. Um, but they're just ones that you use by blowing out of your mouth, which blows the paint through and so basically the paint comes up through one of these siphons and then it blows out onto the piece. I saw it on a live stream from Chestnut Products on their, um, on their Conkers Live and I thought I wanted to have a go with it and see how it worked. And if it works well, it saves me a lot of money on buying a proper spray gun. So then the next thing I bought, which I'm really excited about, is these iridescent paints. Now again, I've been wanting to try these for an absolute age and I'm going to be trying them in a minute on the project I'm working on now. They look really, really good, and they weren't too expensive. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's nine iridescent paints there, so they'll be really good with some of the stains I've got, and I think they'll be really fun to use. So hopefully that project's going to look really good when I finish it. It's going to be inspired by a piece that I saw demonstrated, and I'll show you that in the video and talk a little bit more about that when this video gets released. So the next things I want to talk about are some things that have been sent by companies. So first off is this chamfer plane by Seika. I've been wanting to try one of these for doing things like picture frames and boxes. So um, I've been sent this out to have a try of and there'll be a video coming out about making either a box or a picture frame and this tool will be featured in it. So it will be sort of a review of the tool and obviously a project as well. So hopefully that works well and I enjoy using that. And then we've also got something that I'm incredibly excited about in these packets here. So I've been wanting to do some proper texturing and real carving on my wood turned pieces. And I really want to try some of the saber tooth carving bits. So I contacted them, seeing if they'd be interested in sending me some. And they did. They said they would send me some, and they have. So they're all the way from America. So we've got the coarse ones, we've got some of the fine ones, and we've got a variety here. So these are going to be an absolute blast to try out on my wood turned pieces. And they're just small Dremel compatible bits, but they should be great fun to try on my wood turned pieces, especially on platters and things like that. So there'll definitely be a video about this, probably in the next sort of month or two, because I've got a lot to do, and obviously I'm going to have less time at the moment. So hopefully you'll see these in the next sort of month, but I'm incredibly, incredibly excited to give these a go. And as I said, there's a variety of colours. I did put them on my Instagram, so if you've seen that, 
then that's great. Otherwise, I'll leave a link down below to my Instagram account. So as you can see, there's an absolute variety of them there. So thank you very much to Sabretooth and to Seika for sending me out some things to try. I'll let you know how I get on with all of those in the next few months. So the other thing I've been working on at the moment is this stained glass piece. Now this was inspired by Axminster's Beat the Boredom series and there was a chance to win a £25 Axminster voucher if you tagged them. And I actually won so I've got a £25 Axminster voucher which is absolutely awesome and is going to go towards some of the parts to my dust extraction and I have in fact already bought it. It's one of the Stay Put extraction hoses. I haven't hooked it up yet because I need a couple more bits which I didn't realise but that's going to be connected up to the lathe but I'm absolutely thrilled with how this turned out. I've been wanting to do a scroll saw project, so this was a great start. And if you guys want me to do a video about how to make this, it's really not too difficult. But if you're interested in making a video, then I'm very happy to. I really enjoyed it. It was a really relaxing project. Something you could do whilst just having some TV on in the background if you're in the workshop or YouTube or something like that. It's something very relaxing that you can just make in the background. And as you can see, it's a fairly sunny day today. You can see against this white top, you get some really, really nice colours come off of it. And then it's just simply super glued on the back like so. But really, really happy with this and I absolutely love the look of it. It sits in the workshop and when the sun catches it, you get a really nice colour through it. So among all the projects I'm working on and the things that I've been sent by companies, I've also been sorting out and tidying the workshop. Behind me, I've organised all of the shelves with all of the wood turning blanks. So we've got bowl blanks on the very top shelf. When I say the very top shelf, I'm talking about the shelves of wood. So those four shelves there. So the very top shelf of wood is walnut blanks, big blanks, and really my special blanks that are reserved for special occasions. For example, we've got that green wood piece that's still drying. It's had about three months to dry now, so I can easily put the resin in. I've had a look at it. It has not moved or cracked anything in the last month and a half, so it's definitely ready to have the resin, and it was already partly dry when I started turning it. So we've got that on that shelf. Then on the next shelf down, we've got sort of my smaller blanks. So we've got some lovely Kiat blanks from Surrey Timbers. We've got some pine blanks. There were some pine posts left here, so I cut those up into bowl blanks. And then we've got some bowls that I'm working on. The shelf below, we've got all my spindle blanks. You can just about make that out. It's that shelf there. So we've got probably about 40 or so spindle blanks, different sizes. If I get off cuts from when I'm milling up bowl blanks, I just rip them into spindles because as it's coming into the Christmas making season, I'm going to be making lots and lots of Christmas trees and snowmen. So I'm going to need a lot of spindle blanks. And then the shelf below is again spindles, resin projects, and just random things for wood turning. So some special pieces, or really small bits of wood, or things I want to encase in resin. And we've also got some knife scales down there as well, as that is something I'd quite like to have a go at in the future. So, in terms of Christmas making projects, I know that seems like a long way away, but it's really not. It's already September, it's time to start making Christmas projects. So the Christmas projects I've got planned for this year are snowmen and Christmas trees. Now I did do a video about them last year, however I would quite like to do some more videos but doing a video about how I'm going to batch them all out and how I'm going to work out prices of them and things like that because I'm intending on doing a Christmas market to raise some more money for things in the workshop and also to raise money for other things outside of the workshop for some of my other hobbies and things like that. So hopefully you can see the tool is looking really good. The reason I wanted to bring you over here is because of these, these carving gouges. So I watched a demonstration at the Wood Turning Weekend yesterday of Emma Cook doing some carving and I was inspired to give it a go. So those gouges there are gonna get used in about a month's time for a really cool carving project. Then my uncle gave me this, which he had in his workshop. And then over here, these pictures are just resting on some of the screws that are up here already. And then we've got the shelf up here with the disassembled Sony Xperia phone, an old broken phone that we had which was completely broken so I decided to disassemble it. Over here we've just got the usual stuff, same with the mitosaur. Um, and to be honest, yeah, the workshop's actually not looking too bad in terms of tidiness. The other thing which I haven't shown you is this new workbench. So it's currently covered in wood and things like that, but this is to house this folding bed that we have, which won't fit anywhere in the house. So. This workbench is designed, as you can see, for the height of that. And then on this side we have two shelves, the top one for power tools, the bottom for hand tools. And eventually that will all be power tools when I sort out where the hand tools are going to go. But I might put some cupboard doors on those, I don't know yet. But behind here we've got the fold down bed, or fold up bed. And behind that we've got a huge box of all random things. Then here we've got all my clamps, fire extinguishers, and just generally things like that. Then up here I built this sort of bookshelf to house all of my woodworking and wood turning related magazines and books and all sort of my DIY things so you can see all of those there and then the sandpaper 
and the snacks sit on top of there. Snacks are always essential to any workshop. I've got nature values in there at the moment. And then up here is just sort of a place for more power tools that don't get used as frequently, but I want to be able to have them easily accessible. So we've got the router table, which I'm yet to use. I still need to restore that and practice using a router first. And then we've got the scroll saw, which I did restore. If you're interested in watching that, I'll leave a link down below to that video. So yeah, this is the new workbench. It's made from a piece of MDF and OSB because I didn't want to buy any material. I just wanted to use what I had lying around. But I'm really happy with it. It's plenty strong. I have stood on it. Um, that's how I like to test my things, sit on them, stand on them. And I know if they're not strong enough, then I'll go straight through them. So that's that project. And really happy with that. It's the same depth as the shelf, as you can see. So it sort of fits away into that alcove. And then the door opens and there's that piece of foam to stop it hitting against the edge of that. And then we've just got the cabinet up there for my finishes. And yeah, that's generally it to be honest at the moment. So that's basically everything I've been up to in the past sort of month or so. I hope you guys have enjoyed this very short workshop vlog. It's not ridiculously short, but it's not a long one like I usually do. I don't know how long this is going to end up being when I edit it, but I would suggest it's going to be between 10 and 15 minutes. But I might have talked for longer than that, and the chances are I have. I hope you enjoyed this workshop vlog. If you've got any questions, comments, suggestions, pop them down below. Or you can email me at designandmakeyt at gmail.com. So the next video will be turning a sort of space-themed platter or bowl. So that video hopefully will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it.